If you find your way onto the side road off Highway 82 between the cities of Columbus and Starville, you will find an oasis of sorts, but a challenge for others. From the depths of the sand traps on the back nine, to the rolling greens that would give any experienced golfer a challenge. Even teeing off on the front nine would land you in a heap of trouble. This is not just any golf course. This is a battleground for the Mississippi 4A High School State title. This is Elm Lake Golf Course. Welcome to Max South Sports coverage of the Mississippi High School Activities Association 4A State Golf Championship. I'm Zeke Carrico, alongside me is Adam Frost. We're at Elm Lake Golf Course in Lowndes County, Mississippi. Adam, this golf course looks beautiful. The day, the weather looks beautiful. Tomorrow's weather looks beautiful also. It's a two round tournament. Tell me a little bit about this golf course first. Yeah, this golf course here at Elm Lake, uh, it's a beautiful course, no doubt. Um, a lot of water out here. Uh, it plays about 7,000 from the tips. These young men will be playing forward. Should be around 6,300 yards. Uh, the weather's going to be perfect, like you said. 80 degrees both days. Very little wind, so I, I expect to see some low scores. And uh, I think the guys that can hit the ball a long way, they'll really be able to take advantage of the short par fours on the front nine. The greens are fairly easy to read, so I mean, if the guys can get on in two, there should be plenty of birdie opportunities. Uh, to be honest, I expect to see some scores in the low 70s, maybe even high 60s. Uh, these kids are, are, are very talented. Uh, the team title up for grabs, it's going to be a tight race. There's going to be some good individual players too. Let's talk about some of those individual players and teams that we're going to see on this coverage. Uh, yeah, as far as the teams go, uh, there's no doubt that Caledonia is probably the team that most people expect to win. They're, they're your defending state champions from 2017. They won last year by 22 strokes, and they returned pretty much all those guys from that team. Uh, and not to mention uh, a young man named Hunter Logan, who's probably the favorite to win the individual title here. The young man is committed to Mississippi State to play golf. Uh, he averages a 71 on the year, pretty impressive. Uh, and he made the first team all-state team by the Clarion Ledger. So uh, look, look for him to show out. Well, like we said, welcome to Elm Lake Golf Course and the Mississippi High School Activities Association 4A State Golf Tournament. Fine for an individual title and a team title. And you'll see the rest of this action when we come back on Max South Sports. Today's business requires cutting edge technology. That's why Max South Broadband's business services provide unique business solutions, including direct internet access, fiber options, and customized packages tailored to your specific needs. Experience a comprehensive suite of internet, phone, and TV products to give your business the competitive edge with dedicated services and local personalized support. You're in good hands. Contact a commercial representative today. Max South Broadband, live to the max. Welcome back, Zeke Carrico and Adam Frost here. Adam, we saw a lot of action on day one as the teams jockey for position and set themselves up to challenge for the win on day two. Adam, take us through the leaderboard. Yeah, after the first round, you've got two teams that have really separated themselves. Corinth and New Hope are tied for the lead. You've got Newton County in fifth place, New Albany in sixth place, and Pontotoc in 10th. And on the individual side, you got two guys under par. You got Jake Crossing from New Hope at three under, Hunter Logan from Caledonia at one under, and Stephen Walters from Newton County at even par. And we'll be back with day two action right after this. Since you're already enjoying Max South TV, why not enjoy Max South High Speed Internet? You're already a customer, so it's easy to upgrade today. You can game, surf, stream, and explore the world around you with a lightning fast connection. Connect multiple devices so everyone can enjoy and experience a fast and reliable connection and experience available speeds as high as one gigabit per second. Call to upgrade today and ask for special customer pricing. Max Health Broadband, live to the max. Welcome back in. Day two action here at Elm Lake Golf Course. Zeke Carrico, Adam Frost with me. Adam, we open up with a feature group today of the leader Jake Crossing from New Hope, 
second place Hunter Logan in the individual from Caledonia. Also, they're joined by Corinth's number one, Davis Bronner, and West Lauderdale's number one, Steven Jackson. Adam, first hole, par five. Tell us a little bit about this, and then, and then give us a little recap on what the scores were. Yeah, the first hole is a very reachable par five, 524 yards. These young men can all hit the ball a mile. They shouldn't have any problem getting on in two. Uh, water to the right doesn't really come into play. As far as the scoring goes, Hunter Logan had a par, Steven Jackson had a par, Jake Crossan had a par, and Davis Bronner unfortunately shot one over. So as we take a look here, as they're walking to this green at number one, what do you expect to see over this round? Is this gonna be a match basically just between Jake Crossan and Hunter Logan? Is that what you would do if you were in Jake Crossan's position? Just, just put yourself out there, it's you, two shots up on Hunter Logan for this championship. Yeah, you've got a two-stroke lead. I think it's, I think I wouldn't even look at the leaderboard. I would just shoot the best round possible, do everything I can to help my team get a state championship. Well, as we see now, we're taking the walk to hole number two. Uh, Adam, hole number two is a, a, a fairly short distance, par four. Um, is this drivable for anybody? Do you think Do you think somebody with a good tailwind could maybe drive this hole? You know, it's uh, 357 yards. It's dead straight. Uh, there's, there's nothing that comes into play here. I, I still don't think anybody can drive it. It's just a little too far for these guys, but they should get close. It looks like it's a little uphill. Um, if, if, I'm, if I'm Jake Crossing, I'm probably playing a little safe, playing, playing a three wood off the tee here, positioning myself to maybe flip a wedge at this green, have a chance for a birdie putt. Um, Tell us a little bit about what we saw scores here on, on hole two. Yeah, hole, hole two looked to play a little tough for these guys. Um, we had Hunter Logan with a par, Steven Jackson with a bogey, we had Jake Crossan with a par, and Davis Bronner with a bogey. Adam, as we see here, Jake Crossan continuing through two to remain at three under. Hunter Logan's one under, two sites still behind. We advance to the par three third. This one right up against the road. It's always a little wind from the trucks and stuff driving by. Tell us a little bit about this hole. Tell us a little bit about these scores we're about to see. Yeah, this third hole, very short par three. It's got the easiest handicap on the course. Your only problem would might be dealing with a, a random truck coming by. That might be the only thing that could throw you off. But this is a very easy hole. What kind of shot do you think you would have, like would be the best play? Do you think playing a fade into this would work? Or do you think because the road is right there on the side, do you think you, you'd probably need to hit a high draw into this? Like turn the ball a little right to left at, at the at the flag stick. I think I would hit a fade on this one. The green, the green slopes a little from right to left. You know, it, it might help you hold the green a little bit better if you hit a fade on this one. So go, go through the scores here for us on this hole. Crossing, shot a par. Hunter Logan really got derailed on this hole. He shot a double bogey. Uh, Davis Bronner birdied this hole. And Steven Jackson shot a par. So that gives Crossing a four shot lead as we go to four. Uh, he's got to be feeling very confident. Corinth has to be feeling very confident in the team standings getting that birdie. That gets you a shot up on New Hope, who you were tied with. As we watch Crossing here, try to tap in for par here. Uh, what are you thinking if you're if you're in Corinth's position? You're just out there kind of playing your own game, but you still got to worry about the team title because you're in the hunt. You're tied with New Hope. Do you uh, do you change the way you play if you're in that situation? I don't think so. I think I think Corinth really has a game plan together, and they're going to stick to it. And as you look here at the leaderboard and we take a look at Jack Crossing running across again, he's now got a four shot lead through three. It's early, there's still plenty of holes left to be caught, but, but with a four shot lead, you start to feel a little more confident. You start to maybe not take as many risks, which could also hinder him in the, in the past. But I think, I think this young man's got a good enough swing that he still is gonna feel confident hitting the three wood, he hits it far enough, hitting the driver, he hits it far enough also 
And uh, I think when you're looking here at this at this hole, as we're, we're at another par five, this one a shorter par five, he can basically go three wood and then hit a long iron and be pretty much next to the green. Yeah, Crossing, uh, he's he's got to be feeling really safe with his lead in an individual uh, stroke play. But you still you still want to do everything you can to help your team win. It's yeah. a tough position to be in. Agreed, agreed. As we look at these tee shots here, um, you know, I, I think that, that Crossing is probably in a position to where he's still got a score to help his team, but you gotta protect the lead. As you see, he actually pulls driver here on this hole. Uh, he's he's gonna attack, try to make eagle for his team and, and to, to jump on, on the lead here and maybe extend this lead against, against Hunter Logan. Yeah, this fourth hole, a short par five, he decided to pull the driver out. You know, if you can get on out there 300 yards, you leave yourself with a medium iron, the chance to possibly make eagle. And, and when you see Hunter here, he, he knows He's got to step on the gas to get himself back in there. He pulls driver. Looks like he may be just a little off the fairway, but probably still in range to reach the screen and to have himself an eagle putt. We take a look there. Hunter's lit as, as Hunter gets his bag, and they're going to go walk. Down, they're going to take a walk to the fairway. What is it? What is uh, mentally? You're in this group. What are you thinking? As as uh, you know, you're walking. You've got to control your heart rate. There's a little nerves and you don't know what your other teammates are doing. Is, is, this, is this a hole that you feel like you have to make a birdie if, if you get on the green? You have to make a birdie, you have to help your team, you have to help yourself in this title. Is that is that your thoughts this whole time? Oh yeah, absolutely. This, you feel like this is a hole that you've got to get a red number on. There's just no other option. As you see, Hunter, Hunter Logan hit that pretty close. Um, Crossing was, uh, I think he's already on the green also. Uh, let's go through these scores from this par five. Yeah, Crossing and Logan both really took advantage of the short par five. They both birdied. Uh, Davis Bronner parred and Steven Jackson parred as well. So as you take a look here at Crossing's putt, uh, just, from, just from barely off the green, uh, this one for Eagle, he's gonna leave this just a little short. Uh, You've got to think he's had a tremendous start to this round. You could probably couldn't ask for uh, a better start. Seeing a little bit of, of other guys falling behind him, uh, even though Logan made that birdie to get himself back to plus one. But uh, you know, can't get much better of a start. Uh, I'm sure he is concerned about the team and and where they're at. But this is more of a you know. To him, this this title is his to, to take after four holes. Oh, absolutely! This this is a young man that's in complete control of his game. I I don't think anything could phase him at this point. As we look at the leaderboard here, Adam, we're going to advance in the action to hole 15. But tell us where we stand going in. Yeah, we Jake Crossing is still in the lead at three under. Hunter Logan's still in second place. Uh, he's dropped a couple of shots, but he's at one over. Davis Bronner's at six over, and Steven Jackson's at 17 over. And now here we take a look at Hunter Logan on the tee on 15. Uh, he's, Adam, tell us a little bit about this hole. It's a par three, uh, you know, seems like it's probably uh, a little longer than, than normal. You could probably hit an iron, not, not probably gonna be able to hit a wedge from 169. Uh, but but seven eight iron probably for these kids. Yeah, you're probably looking at a middle iron um, on the tee box here. Uh, nothing very intimidating about this hole. Medium length par three, no bunkers, no water. Should be fairly easy hole. Just again looking at some of the tee shots here on this par three. Uh, 169. That's a, it's a a long par three for me if I'm playing. But uh, but for these guys, I think they're like like we said, they're probably hitting pretty short irons. Look at Jake Crossing. I mean, that's probably eight iron, seven iron maybe for him. Uh, he's probably just gonna try to hit this one about in the middle of the green at, the, at where he's at with this lead. He's probably feeling pretty comfortable right now. Look like he may have hit, been a little steep on that swing. Maybe hit that a little fat, probably came up a little short. Hunter Logan here to putt now. Uh, what were some of the scores uh, that, that were posted on this hole? 
You have a cross and birdied uh, Hunter Logan Pard, Davis Bronner Pard as well, and so did Steven Jackson. You see there uh, Logan coming up just short with his putt. Uh, Chips here from from uh, West Lauderdale and uh, Stephen Jackson, or from Stephen Jackson of West Lauderdale. Uh, he's he's trying to you know keep himself, keep his team in the hunt, um, and 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 got to continue to stay focused out there and, and hit good shots. Yeah, he's no threat to win the individual title, but he's still doing everything he can to help his team stay in this. And here's Corinth uh, coming up to, to putt. Davis Bronner here for his putt. That's uh, for par, I believe. So he knocks that in. And, and then here's the shot of the day, probably shot of the round. Jack Crossan here with uh, probably just a little lob wedge in hand. Yeah, Jay Crossan chipped that in from off the green. He probably wasn't expecting him to get a birdie there, but he pulled it out. Yeah, not a great tee shot from him. Got a little steep with the iron, like we said earlier. Came up a little short, but uh, just a great chip there. Good short game from him. Uh, and, and again, the rich keep getting richer. He keeps extending his lead. He's now up five uh, as we advance on to 16. And here he is with the tee box here. This is the hole, in my opinion, that will make and break. That will be the make and break of this tournament. There's water down there. It's if, as far as these kids hit it. If you if you draw the ball, you have a very there's a very substantial chance that you could hit this ball in the water. And uh, and I think uh, and and Hunter Logan actually did draw it and hit it in the water. As you see here, he's got driver in hand. He's going to try to go right down the tree line, as you see on your screen. Uh, just going to overcook the draw just a little bit as it started out on a great line. Took one hop, went in the water. He had to take a drop there, and uh, that really put him behind the eight ball. Crossing just had a wedge that he flipped onto the middle of the green. Um, and there you see Logan with his drop. Uh, Adam, tell us a little bit about uh, about what the strategy would be for this hole and, and, and what the scores were from these guys. Yeah, this 16th hole, it's it's got to be the toughest hole on the course. The dog leg right, water comes into play on the left. Like you said, you, I'd, this is the hole you want to fade the ball because it's a dog leg right. You can't really draw it. A uh, tree comes into play off the tee to the right, and if you draw it too much, you're definitely in the water, just like Logan did there. Yeah, but um, crossing Pard and Hunter Logan with that bad tee shot, he double bogeyed. Davis Bronner double buggy as well, and so did Steven Jackson. So, so really tough hole, really hard for for them, and and that basically making that par, that basically sewed it up. Yeah, I mean, you can huge. play conservative the rest of the way if you're crossing and win this. But again, there's still that chance, the team title. Logan's still got a chance to win the individual because Crossan's still got to try to shoot a good score. Yeah, you're That's right. the thing about team and individual golf being played together. Crossan has, I mean, he could just cakewalk in. He could he could hit iron. He could he could just do whatever. But at this par three, he's not aiming at the middle of the green. He's trying to go at the flag, and 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 he's got to make this birdie for his team. So, tell us tell us about this par three. Short, but it's over water. Yeah, the 17th, very short par three, 136 yards. But like you said, water does come into play. It's not a complete carryover water, but water comes into play right before the green. As you look here, Crossan did get on the green. He was on the, the far left side. He's got probably 35 feet or more for this putt. And, and there's, a, there's a big ridge here. Just got to try to lag this one up inside 10 feet, basically, if, if you're him. Here's his putt for, for par. It's gonna just rim out. He's probably gonna make bogey here. What what did everybody else shoot on the the hole? Yeah, as you saw there, Crossing, this is the one time where he slipped up and he got a bogey on this hole. A Hunter Logan parted, Davis Bronner parted, and Steven Jackson had a double bogey. So yeah, Jackson probably had a little trouble, either hit it too far or in the bunker. I, I know I saw him when we were, when I was out there walking the course, he had to take a drop. Um, and, and I'm assuming he probably caught, caught the water, maybe caught the side of the green and kicked into the water. Um, our camera shows it pretty well here uh, of, of where we're at. But as we look at the leaderboard, 
going into the final hole, Jake Crossan commanding lead. And uh, and we're going to see what he does here on the final hole. Adam, give us a little info on this final hole. Yeah, the 18th is a par 5, but it's it's a pretty short one at 489 yards. Dog leg left uh, around the lake there, water all the way along the left side. Water comes into play on every shot. But it's it's one that's reachable in two shots. I expect to see somebody make a birdie on this one. And like we said, because because the the, the team title is at stake, uh, you know, Logan's still hitting driver, still trying to attack. Uh, Jake Crossan, I saw him get my driver out of the bag already. Um, he still has to be aggressive here. Still has to be aggressive. Still has to try to make birdies. As you see here, he's about to take a swing with the driver. Um, he's got he's got such a good golf swing though, Adam. I mean, it's it's compact. He doesn't take it back really really very far, but hits it a ton. Yeah. And uh, and and right here, I think he probably had maybe six or seven iron into the green as far as he wow. hits it. But this was this was my shot of the day. This shot right here from Corinth, Davis Bronner, he's gonna hit this underneath the trees and it's gonna actually catch the slope that you'll see when they're standing on the green and roll out to about 14, 15 feet from the hole. Uh, just a tremendous shot from him. But uh, as we see here, Logan's over, over next to the water uh, and he's his approach. He's probably not got more than a four iron in as, wow. as far as he hits it too. But uh, but yeah, this this whole picturesque hole, and actually a hole that if you're a golfer you really like, you got a chance to make a birdie on the way out, like on your way back in. Crossing there with his with his shot, he's going to go just over the green there, land just a little bit short, um, and and then you know. We'll look at these final putts here from from this final group and this featured group. Uh, and, uh, you know, basically put a wrap on this. It looks like looks like uh, Jake Crossan is going to be your individual champion um, and, and just, just a heck of a player. I mean, you, you don't shoot that score for no reason. Yeah, uh, Crossan and Logan, those are two young men that have an outstanding game. I, I expect them both to be playing golf for a really long time. Yeah, Logan there made that nice putt to end his round. I know he probably uh, wasn't the results he wanted, but but still, you know, a nice putt to finish out there. What was what were everybody's scores as we look at at Crossan's pitch and then uh, the putt that he's going to make after this as he nestles that one up fairly close, comfortable enough. Yeah, Crossan birdied this one. Uh, Hunter Logan gave it his best shot. He pulled out an eagle on this hole. Uh, Davis Browner birdied, and Steven Jackson birdied as well. Adam, tell us who. Uh, tell us what happened in the individual standings. In the individual, Jake Crossan is your state champion at three under par. Hunter Logan finished second at one over. And Davis Browner finished fourth at seven over. And in the team standings, Corinth won your state championship at 55 over. New Hope in second. Newton County third. Caledonia fourth, and New Albany fifth. And when we come back after this short break, I'm going to have some interviews with the winning team, the winning player, all that coming up next on Max South Sports. We are Max South. Hi there, I'm Brad. I work in the field to make sure you're getting the best quality service every day. Did you know that we have over 3,000 miles of network? I'm Prentice. I'm here to make sure your signal is crystal clear from its starting point, our head end to your home. My name's Doug. I'm part of our local 24-7 tech support team. If you experience issues, we'll get your service fixed in no time. Max South Broadband. Lift to the max. Well, folks, we've had a fantastic two days out here at Elm Lake Golf Course for the Mississippi High School Activities Association 4A Golf State Championship. I recently caught up with the individual winner from New Hope, Jake Crossan. Corinth won the team event. I caught up with their head coach, Coach Parsons. And Newton County finished third. I caught up with their head coach also, Coach Ken Stranger. 
does and 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 I understand that that you guys have been here last year and you're going to continue to build momentum. Does this is this help in the community to get more kids out to play golf at Newton County? That that is our goal. Last year we had the opportunity to host uh, the uh, 4A boys state at Dancing Rabbit. We hope we're graduating three seniors this year. We got some more kids coming up. So I'm just hoping that with with uh, finishing third this year, we'll make a few more kids want to come out and be a part of what we're building there at Newton County. The individual winner, Jake Crossing from New Hope High School. Jake, 69 on the first day, 72 today. Uh, just what does this mean for you to win this championship and, and to get your team that second place finish? Uh, it definitely felt good to win, especially on our home course. Uh, we've been practicing all year here. We knew we had the potential to do it, and I knew if I played my best golf that it would give us the best chance, and that's what happened this week. How did it feel to sink that putt? You made a you made a really good putt. You hit a good chip on 18. You made that putt. How did it feel to finally know that you were gonna you'd won that title? You'd locked it up right there. It felt good to make birdie on the last hole because it was my last hole of my high school career, and uh, it was pretty. I was pretty excited, and I knew once I made that, I had a pretty good chance coming in. I'm here with Coach Justin Parsons of Corinth High School. They've, they're the team champions in 4A. Uh, Coach, 3-11 on the first day, tied with New Hope. What, is, what, what was your thoughts going into today and what you guys needed to do to pull this off? Oh man, I knew, I knew that we were, we were going to have to shoot low again because I knew New Hope, uh, they were good. Um, you know, they shot score, uh, low scores all year, but I knew, I thought if we could uh, shoot in the 320s, I thought it gave us a good, uh, good shot. But, uh, you know, going into today, I knew, I knew my kids, you know, I had, they had it in them. And, uh, you know, you're always thinking, uh, is the nerves going to get to them? But, you know, these, these kids' nerves are, are, are I mean, they're, they're like a rock. Uh, so, um, you know, going into the second day, you know, knew if we could get, it, get going, um, we had a good shot. And we, you know, we tore the front nine up. And uh, second nine, you know, we struggled a little bit, but the kids, kids hung in there. You, you shot consistently on both days. All players on the team, all five, put in similar scores on both days. Has that been the key for your success all season and then it just rolled over into the state tournament or is that something that, that came as, as you know, just uh, just them stepping up in a clutch moment for, for each other? We we really we we really didn't peak until the very end. You know, at Regents we shot a 301 and everybody was like, whoa, where where did corn come from? And uh, but you know, I knew the kids had it in them. Um, we 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 had a, a few of them that uh, actually got hurt during the middle of, uh, middle of the year. Um, one hurt his back, and you know, uh, some of them was just going through the, through some things. So we didn't really have our full team uh, together until the latter part of the uh, season. I mean, you can, you can talk to uh, everybody that knows us and, and the parents. We knew we had that potential in us to shoot low scores and uh, we were kind of inconsistent there at the beginning of the year and uh, um, middle, but once we got everybody together, we just we just started peaking there towards the end and I mean, everybody started clicking there at the same time, which is what you want, you know, we just we started clicking. Yeah. Well, Coach, congratulations to you and all your players and, and best of luck next year and, and down the future. Congratulations, we really you. enjoyed it. Thank you again, folks, for tuning in. For all of us at Max South Sports, I'm Zeke Carrico. Special shout-out to Victor Carr and Jacob Frost. Also, a special shout-out to Adam Frost.